Welcome to the Neighborhood Church Revive Podcast. We are so glad that you're joining us today as we unpack big ideas about God's Word together. My name is Sean Thomas. I'm the worship pastor here at Neighborhood Church, and we believe that God's Word is relevant and helpful even for today, which is why we take the time to unpack what we talked about on Sunday, go through the sermon series or whatever holiday or time of the year that we're in, and just, uh, yeah, chat about the Bible and God's Word. And we're still continuing through the book of Acts. I'm here with Pastor Mike McKay. Yeah, good to be here. Good to have you, Mike. Mike, and also Pastor Sam Lanka. Hi, Sean. Nice to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Uh, Sam was over at our Los Al campus, uh, brought, gosh, a really just uh, great message, just really encouraging about missions and, uh, you know, following God's calling in our life. It was really cool. Mike, um, it was amazing, I'm sure. (laughs) (laughs) I haven't watched back the Cypress. We'll see, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> but I mean, it was, it was good content. You know, I mean, I know last week, for those of you uh, who follow our podcast, you, you know that we're going through Acts. And um, a few weeks ago, we looked at uh, Stephen, the first martyr of the church, um, and, and just how heavy that was uh, as far as persecution and just devastating. Mm-hmm. However, that wasn't reason for the church to stay insulated and kind of peter out. It spurred on growth, you know, and, and kind of an outward movement. Um, and, and Philip had his story and we're kind of continuing with that idea and going out. So yeah, just curious to hear your guys' thoughts. If there was something that stuck out to you about your study or even from the sermon that you're like, oh, this was a, a moment that, you know, stuck out. Yeah, just a quick getting the scene of things yes, yeah, with yeah. this particular passage mm-hmm. is um, the church is growing. It, it needed some uh, new organization. And so yeah. the apostles said, choose among yourselves seven guys who are full of the Holy Spirit and have ability to organize and all of that. And they wouldn't help deal with an issue that was dealing with uh, widows being fed and all of that. But these two, these two of the seven are, um, are talked about right after that one yeah. was Stephen you mentioned that went out and just started preaching and and you know all around Jerusalem is just they're just a buzz yeah and it really upset the church leaders at the time uh, the, the religious leaders of the time and and actually they had him killed stoned yeah. to death it's a horrible way to die yeah but now the story flips to Philip and Philip goes over to Samaria which really no good Jew would want to go to Samaria they despise them a very yeah. racial issue that was there and and uh, and you see the whole sense of what Jesus has said back in the very beginning of the Bible book of Acts in Acts 1a that yeah. you receive power and the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you'll be my witnesses Jesus says in Jerusalem in Judea now those two are okay with the Jews they, okay you know yeah. but then he says <laughs> Samaria and they yeah. kind of went ah Uh-oh. and then the uttermost parts of the world yeah. which is like what that's going to include Gentiles yeah they didn't really think much about that. They thought it was just, you know, this is kind of a Judaism ramped up to what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Believing in Jesus as a Messiah. And then yet it's for the whole world. Yeah. And the fact that Christ, we all need salvation. And yeah. this particular passage, uh, you know, last week, dealing with John was here talking about the, the, yeah. the um, the what has happened in Samaria and this guy named Simon who tried to buy the Holy Spirit, yeah. which is yeah. just really weird. Yeah. But it's but then now Philip takes uh on and yeah. and to and God says something to him and says, Hey, go to Gaza. Mm. Uh and on the road to Gaza you're gonna meet someone. Yeah. And that's kind of where the story picks up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. That that yeah, good recap just to give us kind of the scope of kind of what's going on. And it to your point, Mike, what you were saying about the Samaritans, Sam, I, I really liked how you explained kind of that whole idea of that that racial divide, uh, Mike, that you uh, picked up on, or just kind of that um, almost seen as a people who had uh, been left behind or rejected God, you know, out of just who they are and just hundreds of years of history to that point. Um I mean, I don't want to jump right into the deep end, but it makes me think about immediately, like, who are the people in our lives, you know, in today's day and age who would be, quote, Samaritans, you know, who are like, oh, I would, why would I interact with this person? Or why would they want to hear the gospel? Right. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, um, that's what uh, surprises uh, me and all of us, the way we discriminate people. Mm. Uh, uh, Samaritans were not a foreigner. Yes, unfortunately, they disobeyed God to some extent, and they intermarried with the uh, Mycenaeans uh, and Babylonians in those days, and their descendants was the Samaritans. Yeah. The truth is, they were half Jewish people. Yeah. 
Now, uh, but the Jews used to hate them, okay? And the same holds true with the Ethiopian eunuch as well. Now, mm. the Bible says that this Ethiopian eunuch, he is not the first Gentile convert. So he's not a Gentile. Mm -hmm. So who was he? That's interesting, yeah. So um, certainly uh, he was not fully Jewish, uh, but what the historians or the church fathers like um, uh, Irenaeus and uh, Jerome, they say is uh, when Solomon married uh, Queen Sheba and when she went back, uh, they say that Solomon sent her with so many precious gifts and also uh, some of uh, her children whom Solomon fathered, probably they were the descendants and uh, Ethiopian eunuch was one of them. That's mm -hmm. what their understanding is. But one thing is for sure that he was not a Gentile. Mm -hmm. Now in my heart grieves, this guy, he traveled almost more than 1,000 miles or 1,500 miles, expecting that he is going to his own people, at least half of his own people. Yeah. But he was rejected, according to Deuteronomy chapter 23, that one whose organs are emasculated, he cannot enter into the sanctuary. So he was returning back with, back with brokenness. Yeah. But good thing is, he did not lose hope. Yeah. He didn't lose hope. Yeah, and I took it just a little different, different angle on that, in that saying that, you know, he, this Ethiopian was a God lover. Mm -hmm. He, um, in some sense, whether he was partial Jew or not, we, yeah. we're not certain. You sure, know, he's yeah. just from Ethiopia. That's all we're told. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, an Ethiopian f official, and he had some love for God and went to Jerusalem, most likely knowing the Deuteronomy 23, I think, 1 passage that says that you uh, that anyone who has undergone any kind of problem uh, with that and that there's been emasculated, had been castrated, was not welcome yeah. in the temple or in the area or even grouped among them. Yeah. However, what's really important in this passage, and this, this passage is really talks about God orchestrating everything at the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. Is that he's reading, you know, as you read for it, is you know, God calls Philip to go to Gaza, and then they run at this chariot of a of this Ethiopian official reading Isaiah. Now, in Isaiah, uh, Isaiah does talk specifically about um, the, the eunuchs and also Gentiles yeah. in the same breath when he talks about that in Isaiah. Let me get to that point. Isaiah, um, I believe it is fifty six. But let me just look at my notes really quickly. And Isaiah, he talks about how that that he that they are included. Uh, there's that God will provide a way to include mm. the eunuch, to include all the Gentiles in all that's going on here, and it'll be a wonderful reality. That's all found in the Bible book of Isaiah. So it's no wonder the yeah. Ethiopians reading that because this the, the Isaiah passage is what gives him hope. This and so hope, he's yeah. he's leaning into that hope, and and in that passage he's also talking about. He's reading Isaiah 53, which talks about Jesus being the suffering servant yeah. in that regard and uh, and very important. So it's Isaiah chapter 56, uh, verses 4 to 5 mention that there is hope for the eunuch and the Gentile uh, to non-Jews to be adopted in to God's family. And Isaiah 56, 6 specifically speaks to that and, and that. And so it's, 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 you know, it's this kind of um, understanding of what's going on here and how God is orchestrating. Here's this. Ethiopian who is uh, has his heart towards God. Yeah, you know, maybe he just wanted to come and just see the temple and be. In, he knew he wouldn't be included, but just on the outside, be able to say, "I'm at least this close to God." Yeah, yeah. So you picture his heart yearning for that, but yeah. not really understanding mm. that. And then, then he he's reading this passage in Isaiah 53. Yeah, and Philip, God directs uh, the Lord directs Philip to go to him mm. and uh, and. And right at the right moment. Yeah, just you know, over hey, years. What? Do you understand what you're reading? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Come on aboard and yeah. talk about that. And then he explains to them all about Jesus. Yeah. And I'm sure he walked through Isaiah. Yeah. It's probably starting in Isaiah 52. Sure. Talking yeah. about the, the, the fact that, that there will be one who will come, who the sin of the world will be upon them. In Isaiah 53, the first part of that talks about the, you know, by his stripes we are healed, by his wounds. Uh, our sin is dealt with. Yeah. And so, and then just shares with them Jesus. And how about Jesus came to give us, you know, show us how to relate to God and show us to take the sin of the world upon him. 
and die. And how we respond to that is through a life change. And, and he talked about baptism. And Jesus even talked about that in Matthew 28. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, yeah, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So, so Philip is just following Jesus' words. And yeah. he, the, the Ethiopian says, I get it. I get it. Everything clicks. Of all the different things <laughs> the that he studied before. Yeah. And he says, why should, shouldn't I be baptized right yeah, now? Yeah. And that, so it's just very awesome reality of life change. But, how, but what's great is how the Spirit orchestrates all the different circumstances yeah. so that Philip is at the right place at the right time. Yeah, and that, I think that's fascinating because uh, this specific uh, chunk of Scripture with Philip, it's it's quite fascinating, you know, where he's he's – being drawn to the spirit and it's, you know, I mean, people will talk about, was he transported by the spirit, you know, like instantly or, or, or was this, you know, the spirit moving. And, and I think I like what uh, we've kind of talked about in the past, you know, of like some of these passages, like we don't need to get lost in the weeds of like, what's the mechanic of this miracle that's happening or, or this, that, or the other. But it's, I, I love how you're pointing out that the eunuch, he was so excited and everything fell into place and he was motivated right there immediately. And then Philip was, I'm just going, I'm following. Where's the spirit leading me? I'm going right here without hesitation. And I just, yeah, I love that idea. Sam, um, even to some of the stuff that you were talking about, just in, in your own story of listening to God's calling in your life and kind of following where his direction leads, whether that's doing missionary work or your work here just uh, locally and, and kind of what you're doing um, at home, you know, basically in your job and, and places like that. But yeah. Any anything else stand out to you guys, Sam? Any yeah, thoughts I mean, on that? the other uh, unique uh, characteristic of this Ethiopian eunuch, as Pastor Mike says, said um, he was actually a seeker. I mean, he was a searcher. He yeah. was searching for the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Though he hasn't given up, but he's meditating God's word and he's looking um, diligently. And uh, as Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen says. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with your all your heart. Mm -hmm. So God is always close to the people who are seeking or searching. So one of the unique characteristics of the people that they are actually indeed elected. Because we share gospel to so many people and mm -hmm. most of the time yeah. they don't uh, believe. Uh, yes, but there yeah. are some other um, kind of people, a group of people who actually searches for the truth. Mm -hmm. They are from the different uh, Gentiles or uh, the worship different gods, but they still have this hunger for the truth. Mm. The Ethiopian uh, eunuch did has hunger for the truth. Yeah. So, yeah, salvation is, is actually a work of God, as God said uh, many times, even in Titus chapter 3, that uh, we are not saved based on our deeds, but based on uh, washing of, uh, of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. It's an act of Holy Spirit. Mm. Our Holy Spirit is the one who will take the initiates. But God mm. has given us equal responsibility to partake in His ministry, which mm. is very important. Um, that's that's a yeah, very um, unique thing that I have uh, seen, that God is close to the people who seek Him. Who yeah. seek him. And I think that behooves us too to pay attention, you know, even like Mike, you were saying how Philip, you know, was hearing these things and, and immediately went, you know, and it, and, and that's not to put pressure on us. Cause I think sometimes, uh, I know, you know, when I was, um, at times in my faith, you know, it's almost intimidating of like, oh, I need to know the Bible exhaustively mm -hmm. in order if a friend has a question or if I come across someone who's seeking, then I can answer every, you know, like a Philip and go through the old Testament and whatnot. Yes, it's good, and and yeah. we ought to be. You know, I mean, that's we want an affinity for scripture, or that's you know part of the reason why we do small group and things like the podcast. You know, to kind of give us these insights, but um, but just to be ready for those um, those instances yeah, where people are Peter, um Three fifteen, I believe it is, is always be ready to make a defense for the hope that is in you, uh, and and that's the idea is that we should. Uh, be ready and and know know kind of some of the key scriptures that we have. Yeah, First Peter three fifteen, and always be ready yeah. to, to give a defense of the hope within us. And yeah, it's helpful to memorize some verses and know yeah, that yeah. this is what the Bible says and to understand the Bible. And Bible study is is great. And Bible the Bible is a, so key for us to discerning the Holy Spirit mm, mm. because you know how did how did Philip know? Yeah, this was the Holy Spirit. How did Philip? And, you know, why did he respond the way he did? I mean, is that, does a thought come in his head? Did, did somebody did he hear audible voice? Yeah. You know, we don't know. It doesn't really tell us that. We do know he was full of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. which means he had 
yield his, his life fully to, to Jesus. Yeah. And he was listening to the Spirit. He was interacting with the Spirit. And yeah. that same Spirit resides in us. When you come to faith in Jesus, the, the Holy Spirit indwells you. Yeah. And and that filling is, is ha- happens as we continue to move forward and um, understand him more and you know, read his word. And that's why I love the the devotional that we have for our, our Lent this getting towards Easter season. And there's a devotional that we have here at the church that uses the method called SOAP, S-O-A-P, Scripture, Observation, Application, Prayer. And you read a passage of Scripture, and then you SOAP it. You mm. you know pick out the yeah. one verse that kind of pops out of your mind. That's the Holy Spirit bringing that to your mind. The, ap- the, the observation is doing some study. You know, look yeah. back in your study notes, what's that passage about? All those things that are happening, some of the particulars that we say in yeah. this devotional, we even give you some study helps. Yeah, yeah, and then the application great. is when you ask the Spirit, what do you want to teach me from this? Mm. And you're exercising that unique um, interaction with the Holy Spirit. And, and, you know, God doesn't speak to me audibly. I've never heard a voice, Mom. You know, I just, I, but I've, <laughs> that I, was me I, the other day. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you're yeah. Um, You know, it's, it, mostly it's a, it's a thought, an inkling, yeah. uh, uh, um, an impression yeah. that God is putting on me. And, and even with that, you know, because I live in a sin suit, you know, this <laughs> yeah. flesh is bent towards that. Sure, and yeah. my mind is always going 100 miles an hour. Yeah. And I I just can't. Sometimes I, you know, sense things and I go, man, I need to make sure that's what God says. Yeah. And so the the, the proof is is going back to his word, you know, in, um, in, in 1 Corinthians 10, 5, I believe it says, it says, hold every thought captive to the word of God. In other words, that we... Yeah, Second Corinthians ten five that, that we we destroy arguments and all these different thoughts that are going on in our head and we hold it captive to the Word of God. In other words, we take that thought. Does it match up with Scripture? Mm-hmm. And and if it does, great. You know yeah, that, that yeah, that's yeah, a confirmation. But also we just need to check with others who are godly because sometimes yes. it's really easy for us to go astray. And we were never meant yeah. to live faith outside of community to mm-hmm. be lone wolves. Mm-hmm. We're meant yeah. to be in a community where we're interacting and people can look at us and go, man, that's crazy. Yeah. And uh, or others say, that's crazy, right? Go for it, you know? And, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, you know, a lot of people have been into that and, um, you know, whether it's someone like an Eric Little, um, a great runner way back mm. uh, uh, in the Olympics and um, he was, he knew God had called him to China but but he uh, to go as a missionary in China. But he realized that God also made him a great runner, and so you know people were saying, "Oh, you're you're such a, a fool to go off to missionary in China. You could be you know make this athletic venture a, a whole business." And yeah. Yeah, but God's called me to China. How did he know that? Yeah, because he'd spent time in God's Word and he had interacted with the Lord, Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit was moving in that way. Mm. That's great, and, and yeah, we'll provide links uh, for the devotional. You can get a physical copy or just check it out uh, online. We'll we'll make that. Uh, uh, Justin and I will be working on that because that's yeah. I, I think that's such a great it, because my question was going to be, what are some um, habits that people can go about to cultivate that recognizing the voice of the Holy Spirit? And I think you answered it. You know, with the soap practice, just spending time in a Christian community. Uh, reading the Bible, you know, studying the word. I think that's, yeah. I mean, it's as simple as that, you know, and, and it's kind of funny to go back to last week, Simon the Sorcerer wanting to purchase the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I think we can, if, if I'm honest, you know, it, and we've talked about it in past podcasts, what's the formula? Yeah. How do I figure this out? Not that we're wanting to like purchase or, or being, you know, conniving in that, you know, I think some of us. Well, that was the only world Simon knew. Exactly. You know, it was, yeah. he was very much, you know, an influencer in his community and, Felt like okay, you know, I want to have more influence. I want to have the Holy Spirit. And he, and he was coming from maybe from a wrong heart. We can't judge. Yeah, him. yeah. And 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 he did in a sense say, you know, hey, uh, help, pray for me. I don't know what else. Yeah, which is good. So, yeah, I yeah. don't necessarily think he was that. I think he was in discovery <clears throat> and uh, not like a uh, you know wolf in sheep's clothing. Or yes, like that, yeah. Some have put him to be. So yeah, yeah. But it's 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 nice to know that it's it's a simple. The lifestyle might not be uh, simple. Yeah, you know, I mean, to live in a community of faith and and you know, I mean, we definitely um, hardship. You know, is something that might come from you know living out our faith. But it's it's simple in terms of of God being available and God being for us. And I like. Sam, how you quoted from Jeremiah, you know, that, that when those who are seeking God with, you know, with an earnest heart, you know, and, and really looking for him, he is present, he is close in that. Absolutely. Yes, that's true, um, Sean. And yeah, um, so generally, um, uh, this is what the Lord said uh, in John chapter 10, 
that my sheep hear my voice. Mm. Now, if you are indeed God's sheep, you will recognize his voice. And also, uh, John 7, 17 says, if anyone is willing to do his will, he will know of the teaching, whether it is from God or not. Mm -hmm. Now, um, yeah, there are some times it's hard because there will be human anxiety. Imagine somebody has to go out of the country as a missionary. So, so many people sacrifice their lives, their families. They indeed uh, traveled, uh, especially from this nation. Even, in fact, the church I come from back in India, uh, yeah. my hometown church, it was built by missionaries. Missionaries served them for so many years. Mm. My parents used to work with them. Uh, we still um, use the same buildings they constructed. I owe a lot to the missionaries, me and yeah. my family. So certainly, when you you need to move, uh, take such a big decisions. Yeah, there will be human anxiety. There will be stress um, to some extent, since you also need to take your family and your children. You need to leave uh, everything. But that's where comes godly men, mm. fellow brothers and sisters, mm. who would come along with you, who would um, encourage you, support you. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it's almost it, it's always again the love of God. Yeah. What drives us is the lost souls. Some people lost their lives and their family members, their everything. Look at William Carey. My heart uh, goes with uh, his family, but hmm. um, I'm amazed the way he served the Lord. He mm -hmm. never gave up. Yeah. His own people, uh, East India Company, who was uh, uh, ruling in India, they want him to go, but he, but he didn't. He didn't leave because uh, he has done so many things. That it's all... For the love of the people. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. William Carey is a great uh, mm. story to follow. I've read some about him. And he's a father of modern missions. Uh, he's the one. He was a doctor, um, you know. And 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 to go to the mission field was people were saying, "What are you doing?" <laughs> yeah. But he said, "You know, God had called him, and he was yes. he was able to discern that the Holy Spirit was directing him. You know, yeah. kind of just like Philip being at the right place at the right time." Yeah. To do that, and that's that's it, that, that, you know that's where I want to be. I want to be at the mm -hmm. right place at the right time under the direction of the Holy Spirit, and that's a lot of that is is found in prayer and mm -hmm. taking time to stop and to pray. And prayer is not always talking to God. A lot of prayer is listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and sometimes that's a lot of silence. Yeah. It takes a while to to have your head stop or the hard drive of your head stop spinning. <laughs> you know. And, and letting God speak into your life. And, yeah. um, you know, we, I, again, we need to hold every thought captive. We yeah. need to yeah. think through those things. You know, if the, as I mentioned Sunday, if the, all of a sudden you get a thought, you know, I need to reject my neighbor because they, they're so mean to me and they, 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 you know, they do mean things. And that's, you know, I just need to, the Holy Spirit telling me to yeah, reject yeah. my neighbor. Right. I said, well, no, that's not right. Because yeah. the, Jesus said very clearly, love your neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. Not reject him, but to love him. Yeah. And uh and that's that's an important part. So that's where we need to hold every thought captive in the word of God. Yeah. You know, the 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 Bible is so important to us and I, I feel like I am a broken record. Mm -hmm. Get into the Bible, get into the Bible. Yeah. Get, you know, and it, that's that's how we discern yeah. the spirit. You know, Philip was able to tell this Ethiopian eunuch all about Jesus and the scriptures because he had studied the scriptures. Now mm. the spirit did direct him. Yeah. And the spirit does that gives us utterance um, of the things that we may not have fully in our conscious mind, but pulls yeah. it out. But, but, but a lot of that is Philip had studied mm -hmm. yeah, and he, he'd gone through the, the prophet Isaiah and had read through those scrolls yeah. and understood that and, and how it all clicked. And I'm sure Jesus did that with all the disciples. Yeah. You know, he did it on the road to Emmaus with a couple of new yeah. converts. And he said he went through all of the, the, the prophets and said how they all pointed to him. Yeah. And I'm sure he did that same thing with the disciples. It's the same thing. And the kind of lights went on. <gasps> That's what that means. That's probably they were you know, all yeah, talking yeah, about that yeah, all yeah. the time, I'm sure. Because you know, yeah. it's easy to skirt over the things that we don't like to hear. You know, I'm yes. sure. Yeah, yeah. The, the, you know, the, the Jewish, um, even though it was never supposed to be this way, and I hope I'm not going on a tangent here, but even though the, the, the scripture talks a lot about being inclusive, Mm. A lot of people have determined to being exclusive, mm. uh, and we need to be inclusive. You know, we talked about you know separation, and and we need to be separate. That's separate in heart and mind, not separate of not being around other people. And so the, yeah. this great um, racial issue began that you know we're this certain race, Jews, Jews yeah, race, yeah, we're, you know, we're doing, and yeah. we need to be you know, separate. And yeah, there was some things that God had said to be: don't intermarry, don't do these kind of things. Yeah. But He meant for that whole 
race to be a light to the nations. Yeah, to bring them to, in. To, to tell yeah. them and show off God. Yeah, yeah. And and all of that. But they, they, they get so much into protecting instead of being able to proclaim yeah. about who God is. It, 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 it messed up. And you look back all through Scripture about how God had always intended for us mm. to be involved with other people. Yeah. Regardless of where they're at. Yeah. And not to be exclusive, you know. We want to, and today we want to huddle into Christian everything, and then you know, no, don't come out. Don't touch the world. Yeah, yeah. And yet that's what we're supposed to be. We should be light in dark places. And how can yeah. we be light in dark places if we're all around light all the time? Yeah, no, that's. So I mean, I can go off on that. <laughs> I was just going to ask if you guys had any final thoughts. That was yeah. good. Yeah, it was a good. Well, it's just, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. Part of my dissertation was about yeah talking about how looking at scripture and saying yes, we are to be interactive. We should be part mm -hmm. of our city part of our government, part of the world, part of organizations around us, our schools, all these things. We yeah. should be part of that. Integrated into the fabric of yeah, the society and to share, around and to share and show Jesus. Yeah, and to shine that light. That's the whole idea about being missional. Yeah. Which is Acts is all about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is on theme for our, our broad theme of the year, yeah. not just in the book of Acts. But, well, guys, wonderful conversation. Sam, any last uh, points that you want to mention before we wrap up? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, was, I was pondering more on... Um, the religious leaders and the way Jesus uh, uh, handled uh, people. For example, um, Matthew, the tax collector, yeah. people rejected, but Jesus accepted him. Mm. Zacchaeus, people rejected, Jesus accepted. Yeah. When the little children, people wanted to take them to Jesus. Disciples said no, but Jesus said yes. Mm. People want to punish the adulterous woman, but Jesus said no. Yeah. Okay. So that's the difference between our God, the true mm. God, right? Mm. Yeah. That's a great, yeah. But even even yeah. Uh, some of the disciples just call down thunder on the Samaritans, you know, <laughs> yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Like, Hellfire brimstone onto them, and Jesus is no, no, no. Yeah, wait a sec. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, dude. Wonderful conversation, you guys, and just yeah, I love that. Yeah, we're just bringing that to the forefront of our conversation and just for hopefully um, for those of you listening, this is inspiring to you too. And if there's someone that you feel like needs to hear this message, you know, about how, um, you know, the kingdom of God is inclusive, you know, I think about, you know, fast forward to revelation, you know, I mean, there's, there's a number of folks, you know, can't even be counted of every tongue, every tribe and nation, you know, essentially, you know, that, that yeah, so it's just beautiful. Well, thank you, Sam. Thank you, Mike, for this conversation today. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Like I was saying, if, if you feel like you want to share this episode with a friend, um, you can find uh, this podcast or any of our past podcasts on our website. That's neighborhoodchurch.com slash revive. For this particular episode, um, uh, uh, always every weekly episode is going to be available on our homepage with all the, uh, the show notes. I think the soap uh, uh, reference, the articles and everything like that, all the deeper parts of the study will be linked there as well. Uh, if you want to listen to the message uh, from last Sunday, you could go to YouTube and look up Neighborhood Church of Cyprus or Neighborhood Church of Los Alamitos, and you can see um, our Sunday services there. You can also check us out on social media under those same handles on Facebook and Instagram. As always, we love hearing from you guys, so please feel free to email us with any questions or comments. You can send us an email at connect at neighborhoodchurch.com, that's C-O-N and ECT at neighborhoodchurch.com. And until next time, we pray that God revives your soul.